In this video, we will talk about the myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is the irreversible death of the heart muscle cells due to the prolonged lack of the oxygen supply. When the heart muscle cells don't receive the oxygen and nutrients for a prolonged period of time, they start to die. The causes of the myocardial infarction include the blockage in the coronary artery due to the coronary artery disease. Remember in coronary atherosclerosis there is a formation of the plague or the atheroma that limits the lumen of the coronary artery. Also if this plague ruptures the body forms the clot at the uh, place of the rupture and this blocks the whole lumen of the coronary artery and the area of the myocardium supplied by that coronary artery or by the branch of that coronary artery receives no blood and if this continues for a prolonged period of time that area of myocardium starts to die coronary artery spasm this can be due to the drugs like the cocaine or the uncontrolled hypertension damage to the coronary artery this may be due to the dissection where there is a tear in the tunica intima which is the innermost layer of the blood vessels and uh, the blood starts to leak into the tunica media which is the middle layer and this limits the lumen of the artery and the blood supply to the myocardium is limited or stopped there are various risk factors that put a person on high risk of getting the myocardial infarction tobacco causes injury to the coronary arteries and other blood vessels also and uh, this leads to an increased risk of the uh, myocardial infarction high blood pressure diabetes these two conditions the high blood pressure and the diabetes also damage the blood vessels throughout the body high blood cholesterol when a person is having a high blood cholesterol this cholesterol can get deposited on the inner walls of the arteries and this can block the lumen of arteries and put the person at high risks for getting the uh, myocardial infarction family history of heart diseases and stress in a normal blood vessel or a coronary artery the blood flows normally without any abnormal resistance and all that and uh, there are also small amounts of uh, LDL the uh, low density lipoproteins also called as the bad cholesterol in the blood and uh, suppose if the patient is having any of the risk factors these LDL the uh, bad cholesterol starts to accumulate on the artery walls and form the plague or the atheroma now this atheroma can grow in size over time and uh, in case it ruptures it uh, invites the body mechanisms that start to heal that part by forming a clot and this clot can block the whole lumen of the coronary artery and the uh, part of the myocardium supplied by this coronary artery receives no blood and if this continues for a prolonged period that the myocardium receives uh, no blood supply no oxygen supply the uh, heart muscles start to die irreversibly what are the complications of the myocardial infarction these include the irreversible death of the myocytes the early signs that indicate the irreversible death of myocytes include the myoglobin which is detectable in blood one hour post injury but the problem with the myoglobin is that it is not so specific to the heart muscle cells troponin this is released two to four hours post injury and it is more specific than myoglobin to the uh, heart muscle cells the creatine kinase myocardial band the ekg or the ecg change that we will see in the later sections after 24 to 30 hours starts inflammation which increases the risk of the cardiogenic shock and the pericarditis after 10 days of the myocardial infarction starts the granulation due to the macrophages and after two months the scarring starts which affects the size and the function of the heart due to the increased amounts of the collagen the other complications include the heart failure depression and ventricular aneurysm now the clinical manifestations to remember the clinical manifestations we have to remember the mnemonic crashing when the patients are experiencing the uh, myocardial infarction they are complaining of the crashing chest pain so this will help us to remember the clinical manifestations of the mi c stands for the chest pain which the patient explains as heavy and severe 
the R for the radiating chest pain. The chest pain may radiate to the arms, it may radiate to the jaw, the back or the abdomen. Unrelieved by the rest or nitroglycerin, this chest pain in myocardial infarction is not relieved by the nitroglycerin. Sweating, hard to breathe. Because the myocytes are dying and it, uh, it, it becomes increasingly difficult for the heart to pump out the blood, the pulmonary edema or the pulmonary congestion results which results in the uh, dyspnea or uh, shortness of breath. Increased heart rate or the blood pressure, nausea and vomiting, going to be anxious. The patient uh, experiencing the signs and symptoms of myocardial infarction is absolutely going to be anxious. Now how can we diagnose the myocardial infarction? First, we use the EKG or the ECG. This is a normal EKG or the ECG wave. In MI, there are several abnormal changes in this uh, uh, ECG wave. The first is the ST segment elevation. And uh, whenever this occurs, this uh, indicates an injury to the myocytes or the myocardium. ST segment depression, where the ST segment falls below the isoelectric line the hyperactive T wave, the inverted T wave, all these three, the uh, ST segment depression, hyperactive T wave, and the inverted T wave uh, indicate the ischemia to the heart muscle cells. The pathologic Q wave. The Q wave is normally a little bit uh, below the isoelectric line, but in abnormal Q wave, the Q wave is above or below the uh, normal position of the Q wave. The next thing we use is the echocardiogram. This evaluates the ventricular functioning and studies the uh, structure of the heart. The next thing is the laboratory test is to evaluate the levels of various cardiac uh, biomarkers like the troponins, creatine kinase and myoglobin as we discussed earlier. The next thing is the angiography. In this a catheter entering the radial artery or the femoral artery reaches to the coronary arteries and uh, it uh, releases a dye in the coronary artery and the serial x-rays are taken to uh, see the path of the dye through these coronary arteries and this is uh, particularly helpful to detect any blockages in the coronary arteries. Now the medical management. Initial management. To remember the drugs in the initial management, we have to remember the mnemonic MONA. The N stands for the uh, morphine, which is used to reduce the pain of uh, angina and reduces the preload and offload. In nutshell, it decreases the cardiac workload. The O stands for the oxygen to help the patient get extra oxygen. Nitroglycerin, it causes the vasodilation and uh, increases the coronary artery perfusion. Aspirin. It inhibits the platelet aggregation and prevents the formation of subsequent clots. The emergent percutaneous intervention. In the ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, the patient is taken directly to the cardiac catheterization lab and the time from the arrival of the patient to the percutaneous intervention should be less than 60 minutes. This is termed as the door to balloon time. In this procedure, a catheter is inserted into the coronary arteries where there is the blockage and a balloon inflates there which re-establishes the lumen of the coronary artery and increases the blood flow through it. Alternatively, a stent can be left there which maintains the uh, lumen of the coronary artery. The medications used in the myocardial infarction. To remember the medications, we have to remember this sentence. Acute angina means nasty acute blockages and cardiac complications. The A stands for the antithrombotics like the heparin which prevents the clot formation. The time from the arrival of the patient to the administration of the heparin or the, or the antithrombotics should be less than 30 minutes and it is termed as the door to needle time. Antiplatelets like the aspirin, these prevent the uh, subsequent clot formation by uh, inhibition of the platelet aggregation. Morphine, it relieves the chest pain and decreases the cardiac workload. Nitroglycerin causes vasodilation and uh, increases coronary artery perfusion. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. 
the ACE inhibitors block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to the angiotensin 2 which is a potent vasoconstrictor and by blocking the conversion of angiotensin 1 to the angiotensin 2 there uh, occurs the vasodilation beta blockers like the propanolol metoprolol uh, the beta blockers help to decrease the cardiac workload and decrease the blood pressure angiotensin receptor blockers like the losartan telmisartan olmisartan these block the effects of angiotensin 2 and cause the vasodilation cholesterol lowering agents also called as the statins these are given to the patients who are having a high blood level of cholesterol to decrease the level of cholesterol in the blood calcium channel blockers these also cause the vasodilation and decrease the blood pressure remember time is muscle the more time you take to make the interventions the more number of uh, cardiac cells die assess the chest pain of the patient and see if it is decreasing or increasing also assess the cardiovascular system by the 12 lead ecg system continuous cardiac monitoring may be indicated at the bedside by the cardiac monitor monitor the heart rate and the blood pressure to evaluate the uh, condition of the patient place the patient on nasal cannula as uh, prescribed to help the patient get the extra oxygen establish the iv access for uh, quick administration of medications and the iv fluids place the patient on the strict bed rest because the rest helps to decrease the workload of the heart and it also decreases the intensity of the signs and symptoms that the patient is experiencing due to the myocardial infarction monitor the respiratory system because the cardiac muscle cells are dying it becomes increasingly difficult for the heart to pump the blood and uh, this leads to the pulmonary congestion and this uh, causes the shortness of breath in the patient collect the cardiac enzymes at the ordered times to evaluate the levels of different uh, uh, cardiac biomarkers and also administer the medications that the physician has ordered thank you that was all about the myocardial infarction